Donc parle bien. Parle avec la précision. Ne manque pas de... Ne les insulte pas sans savoir ce que vous, fait, ce que vous faites. Et enfin, peut-être les gens vont vous comprendre. We invite you to describe or draw a metaphorical landscape that would map out an ideal relationship between an artist and an audience. It is about demanding the hearts and minds of all who are present, whether they be artists or audiences, and constantly asking who's not here. I think how we can treat audiences better is, and how we can better negotiate the relationship between artists and audience is to think about them more fully in the creation of the world. There have been cuts, but the cuts have been, I think, much less severe than they might have been, because actually we've got better at having the conversation, which is that actually, you know, the investment in the arts is providing, as well as all of the economic return that comes back from, even in terms of the tax, the amount of that's paid back in tax, the amount of ancillary income. Because actually we're thinking about Facebook and the things. We're not really thinking about looking at the, the world in another way. About um, um, digital innovation doesn't have to be about something new. It can be stuff that people have said for years, but if no one ever does it, it's still pretty innovative. Um, it's about where culture takes place and how culture is configured to argue for the idea that a mobile phone is not just a communication tool, it is a cultural space, it's where culture takes place. The only place. way to have a credible, probably credible public voice is to be speaking on behalf of an institution that therefore gives you credibility, but that you have to have compromised to the values of that institution in order to achieve that position. I think the, the frustration that, that, that we talked about that I have, which is that um, things like distribution, marketing, art that is about the digital realm, art that uses digital tools to explore other themes like social cohesion, you know, whatever that is. Painting robots. Paint, all... Painting robots. It's all put into one thing, as if, as if it is one thing. The only thing it has in common is that there is a future involved at some point. What do you want to do this afternoon? I want to dress up. I want to read the Turner Diaries. I want us all to read the Turner Diaries. And then I want to try and write. I want to dress up this afternoon, but I want to try and write. I want to try and write like the fascists do. I don't want to encode. I don't want to duck and weave around love as some multi-layered transcendent experience or tell some story where I follow a thought and out of that thought pops a string and on that string as I pull it out of my mouth is tied a sad man and an aeroplane and some sudden and terrible accident that tells us all something about loneliness. I want to be somebody's butcher. I want to be their shoemaker. I want to be the corner shop. I want to be an integral part of a local community who need me and need us to do something for them as a function in that community. And as long as we have to sell as capitalists to an audience who have to buy as consumers, that's impossible. So I suggest that it's not that we, have, that we have failed to convince people that the arts matter, it's that we have failed to try to convince them that the arts matter. And I say that as a person who sort of feels I do nothing else, but I think what I've been doing and what many of us have been doing for many years is trying to persuade people to buy the arts. That's what we've been trying to persuade them to do. Think about young people and their uh, schooling and how we are brought up in this society where we are not uh, encouraged to consider the, uh, the alternative. We live in a, an extremely monocultural uh, world where we are coerced into results, uh, into tracks, and anyone who jumps from those tracks is considered to be a deviant to some degree. But for me, art exists in questions and ideas around uncertainty and alternative, uh, and, 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 and alternativeness, if that is a word, that must be a word. I think they're already part of the artists. You know, I, I, mean, I think that people who think they're outside of it in some way haven't been affected. It's just that they don't see themselves included in that, yeah. that subset. The way we beat capitalism is to stop acting like the way capitalism tells us we should act, which is as rational, self-interested uh, pricks. We may uh, change your mind or have ours changed for us. 
We may find people and inspirations which lead us to make something new and true. And through this, we may, may find a strength to face the fear. Um, and perhaps that will be the time when our work stops making the circuit with capitalism. Uh, in the many forms of medical treatment that I've received for the past 13 years, I've come up against the one problem and that is never answered or seems difficult to answer. How can I improve my mental illness whilst living in a system that is mental? After falling beneath the paving stones, I meet him and he tells me, it is my beloved. And when the person or the thing you love is in danger, you'll defend it, even when you're told it is a lost cause. It's pointless. And when I think I can't reach it, I remember that I can do anything I want. And all I need are two things. The will and the honesty. The ground shakes, fumbles and moves beneath us. Our ears fill with noise. Sand is thrown into the air in frenzy. Structures, buildings, crumble and fall to the ground. There are no sirens or blue flashing lights. The earth opens up beneath our feet. We tumble back. We sway. I feel an arm around my shoulder help me up. And slowly, slowly, 